हेलो एवरीवन नमस्कार आप सभी को इट्स अ डिलाइट टू बी बैक इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू फॉर येट अनदर सेशन ऑन द मेरिट शाइन चैनल एंड दिस इज रवि इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू सो वी गोन कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेर वी लेफ्ट ऑफ इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वेर एन वी लुक एट अ रैपिड फायर फॉर द मंथ ऑफ अक्टूबर इन टर्म्स ऑफ जनरल अवेयरनेस बैंकिंग अवेयरनेस एंड फाइनेंशियल अवेयरनेस वट वी गोन डू नाउ इन दिस सेशन इज गोन बी लुकिंग एट द मंथ ऑफ नवंबर ट्वेंटी and a rapid fire as always 100 questions and we'll try to wrap it up as quickly as possible so again as i said in the last session also bane rahiye till the end because agar aap thoda sa bhi time ke liye uh, deviate ho jayenge apne attention se so aapke questions miss ho sakte hain so that is the pace at which we'll be going today as well uh, if you want to look at some of the previous sessions as well so we've done a comprehensive uh, mock test as well uh, for the period let's say february till uh, september 2021 and we also did an october 2021 rapid fire so the link to both those videos is there in the description below so there are two important points that i would recommend to you in order to derive the maximum learning from this session so point number 1 if you are someone who's okay with the speed and the space so isi pace pe isi uh, speed pe aap video ko dekhiye but pura ka pura video zarur dekhiye because it is going to give you a quick revision for the month of november if you are someone who's okay to increase the pace then definitely you should try and look at watching it at 1.5x as well because even then you'll be able to cover the entire portion and obviously you'll be able to do it at a faster speed so look at 1.5x as well and ensure that you watch the entire video because that will give you a good quick revision The second point is in order to derive the maximum learning let's try and gamify this a bit so the context will be that aap jo bhi score kar rahe hain usko track rakhiye and write that in the comment section of this particular video because it will give you a track of how much do you remember right so comment section mein score mention kariye ye do cheez karne se aapka overall learning jo hai is video se aur bhi behtar ho payega so are you ready even if you miss a single minute i may have moved on to a next question by that time so stay with me throughout the session and we'll derive the maximum value out of it so without further ado let's dive right in so let's kick start the session with the first question so recently government of india and the reserve bank of india has announced the sgb or the sovereign gold bond scheme 2021 2022 which of the following have to be as per the options okay so sgbs were issued in four tranches 7 8 9 and 10 series from october 2021 till march 2022 the ministry of finance has fixed the nominal value of sovereign gold bond at 4261 i don't think this is the correct uh, value i think it was slightly higher than this and to reduce the demand for physical gold the sovereign gold bond scheme was launched in november 2016 i think that's also incorrect i think it was november 2015 let's look at the answers in this case yes only one option is correct because you had the ministry of finance fixing the nominal value at 4761 and it was in november 2015 when sgb was officially launched moving on to question number 2 so sebi basically formed a seven member projects advisory committee also known as information technology pac project advisory committee and it also constituted reconstituted rather the technical advisory committee so both of these committees were uh, kind of formed so the it pack Uh, is a committee that will be headed by Dr. Abhay Karandikar, a director at IIT Kanpur, uh, to provide guidance to upgrade the existing IT systems of SEBI and provide the solutions with the latest IT practices, techniques, tools, and technology. So that is something which is very good from an IT perspective. Secondly, it also reconstituted the seven-member technical advisory committee, and this technical advisory committee (TAC), if I may call it, will be chaired by Deepak B. Fatak, a former professor of IIT Bombay. Again, now, earlier the technical advisory committee. had only four members i'm not so sure if it was four or five so i'm a little doubtful on this one uh, the members of the it pack may also be nominated to the expert committee for dispute resolution in it projects at sebi definitely true so this is also there so i think the only one which is incorrect is uh, this one so from that perspective if i look at it option 1 2 and 4 are indeed correct and the earlier panel only had five members when i basically talk about the tac so not four but five okay moving on to question number 3 Okay the union government has constituted a 20 member EGOS which is basically empowered group of secretaries to look after the implementation of uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, Gati Shakti or the national master plan for multimodal connectivity who will basically chair this EGOS so that will be chaired by Rajiv Gauba right so that is the context overall and uh, that's basically the current cabinet secretary uh, will be the chairperson and the pm gati shakti uh, national master plan is basically a 100 lakh crore rupees project that is there for the development of infrastructure in order to make india at par with the global world as well moving on to the next question which of the following is the incorrect option for national sports awards 2021 okay so the context is the recipients were recommended by the selection committee of the national sports award 2021 chaired by the former supreme court judge justice uh, Mukund Kum Sharma so that is definitely true i think it was not eight awardees probably a higher number that was selected for major dhyanchand khel ratna award 2021 35 awardees are selected for the ajna awards 
टेन फॉर द्रोणाचार्य अवार्ड एंड फाइव फॉर दी ध्यानचंद अवार्ड फॉर लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट राइट सो आई थिंक ओनली वन विच इज इनकरेक्ट इज ऑप्शन बी बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ अवार्ड इज फॉर ध्यानचंद खेल रत्न अवार्ड वर ट्वेल्व एंड नॉट एट Moving on to the next question, who is the author of the book titled "The Sage with Two Horns: The Unusual Tra Tales from Mythology"? So here there is a huge series that has been launched by Sudham Murthy, and it has got a lot of uh, uh, the unusual tale series across a lot of different segments, which basically features stories of kings and queens, gods and goddesses, sages and extraordinary men and women of wisdom. So, for example, some of these were Serpent's Revenge, uh, Tales from Mahabharata, then the uh, Upside Down King, again from Rama and Krishna, then Man from the Egg, which is the uh, Trinity. and uh, daughter from the wishing tree again unusual tales about women in mythology see there some of the unusual tale series and that has basically been uh, written by sudha murthy moving on to the next question the karnataka chief minister basavaraj s bommai basically launched the state's ambitious janasevaka which is basically people servant scheme and the janaspandana which is an integrated public grievance redressal system which is ipgrs now we have talked about the different options that are given here so under the janasevaka scheme 38 garments service i think it was more than that that can be availed at the door step including aadhar card caste or income certificate uh, the janasevaka scheme uh, the citizens can basically use the toll free helpline or the web portal to book the garment certificates required and avail the service at a cost of rupees 115 only in 2019 the janasevaka scheme was implemented in the dasarahalli area on a pilot basis and has now launched covering the entire bangalore city talking about janaspandana it is a one stop platform for the citizens to raise complaints on any government scheme or service and mobile one app of the karnataka government can be used to avail the service under the janaseva ka scheme so i think the only one which is incorrect according to me is 38 government services i think it was more than that so the number that we're looking at is 58 government services that can actually be looked at through the janaseva ka scheme moving on to question number 7 which of the following is the correct option for the mukhyamantri uh, ghasiari kalyan yojana So the scheme has been launched by the Union Minister uh, Amit Shah, Ministry of Home Affairs in Shimla, Himachal Pradesh. I'm not sure, sure if it was Shimla. I think it was more related to Uttarakhand. Okay. Anyway, moving on to the next. Under the schemes, nutritious fodder or the cattle feed silage would be basically provided in the vacuum packed bags of 25 to 30 kg to the cattle owners at the rate of rupees two per kg on 30 percent subsidy. That's a very good number. And as part of the scheme, around 2,000 farmers will cultivate maize on about 1,000 acres of land, benefiting about 1 lakh farmers. So the scheme is very good, but it was not launched in uh, Himachal Pradesh. It was instead launched in Dehradun, Uttarakhand, right? And again, it was launched definitely by the Ministry of Home Affairs, that is Mr. Amit Shah. Okay, so now moving on to the next question, number eight. We are talking about the Tenzing Norgay National Award 2020. It was given in 2021, but it was for the year 2020. So the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has selected nine participants for this. I'm not so sure if it was nine. I think it was a slightly lesser number. Uh, was it established in 1994? Yes, it was established in 1994 as the erstwhile National Adventure Award. Yes, but it was later renamed to Tenzing Norgay National Award. But I'm not so sure if it was in 2006. I think this year was different. So I think this is definitely also incorrect in that context. Yes, Priyanka Mohite was indeed selected for the award under outstanding contribution in the field of land adventure. So this one is definitely correct. So I think options. Uh, One and two are incorrect. That's the context here. So again, yes. So this was seven recipients that were selected, and it was renamed as Tenzing Norgay National Award in 2002. Right. Moving on to question number nine. Which word has been chosen as the word of year for the Oxford English Dictionary? Again, the word is vax. It's a short form for vaccine. That's the context as far as this one is concerned. Not talking about uh, the next question number ten. Read the following and the correct option for Infant Protection Day. So Infant Protection Day is annually observed globally on the seventh of November. The theme for 2021 Infant Protection Day is protecting, promoting, and developing infants. So, according to the WHO, 2.4 million babies died in their first month of birth in 2019. That's a staggering number. But if I look at the facts, I think all of them are correct. So, every day over 7,000 children die, accounting for around 47% of all child mortality. That's a very sorry state of affairs. Hopefully, this improves. Now, moving on to question number 11. So, basically, talking about the National Cancer Awareness Day. So National Cancer Awareness Day is annually observed across India on the 7th of November again and the observance of the National Cancer Awareness Day on November 7th also marks the birth anniversary of the Polish French physicist and chemist uh, Madame Marie Curie who won the Nobel prize in two subjects so basically she won that in physics in 1903 and in 1911 for chemistry as well The first National Cancer Awareness Day was observed on 7th of November 2015. So I'm not sure if 2015 was the year when this was started. So I'm a little unsure about this one. So I think the options one and two are correct. The answer in this case happens to be that it was on 7th November 2014 when the first National Cancer Awareness Day was observed. Okay, moving on to question number 12. Which Indian city has been selected among 
the 49 cities as one under the UNESCO Creative Cities Network, UCCN for the year 2021. So the city that has been selected for this is Srinagar. So Srinagar is under the craft and folk art category where it has been nominated or selected. Moving on to the next question, number 13. So what is the incorrect option with regards to leads? That is this logistics ease across different states 2021 index, leads index. So this has been prepared by a team of transport and logistics professionals at ENY LLP with guidance and inputs from the Department of Logistics, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So the LEADS 2021 index ranks are basically presented in three separate categories, namely the states. Then you have the Northeastern states and Himalayan Union territories and the other union territories. Okay, the LEADS 2021 is basically the third edition of the LEADS report. The first one was in 2018 and the second one was in 2019. Now, it says that Haryana has retained its position as the top performer amongst the 21 states and uh, the LEADS 21 uh, methodology basically is looking at the logistics infrastructure and services across India. So the only problem that I have with this option is uh, I don't think Haryana was the winner in this case and uh, maybe it was Gujarat if I remember correctly. So let's try and have a look at it. So Gujarat is indeed the one which has retained its position as the top performer amongst the 21 states in LEADS which is your logistics ease across different states index 2021 and the second position is with Haryana, third Punjab and then Tamil Nadu. That's the ranking as far as leads index is concerned. Moving on to question number 14. First Chinese woman to walk in space and the answer is Wang Yaping. That's the correct answer. So first Chinese woman to walk in space following the completion of our six hour stint outside the Tiangong space station as part of its ongoing construction. So she achieves the title of the first Chinese woman to walk in space. Number 15 now. Recently, the Indian Navy and the Mukti Bahini of Bangladesh had launched the Bangla version of the book titled Operation X about the Naval Commando Operation. And this book has or have been written by which of these authors? So if I remember correctly, I think uh, generally when you talk about these kind of books, so there has to be one journalist involved and uh, uh, let's say one of the officials in the ranks. And I think the combination here is option A and B. Captain MNR Samant and uh, Sandeep uh, Unnirtan, who were the two ones who were involved in this. Yes, absolutely. Right. So they basically uh, co-authored this book. Right. So basically Captain MNR Samant and noted author and journalist Sandeep Unnitan. Okay, moving on to question number 16. Which of the following is the incorrect option in the first edition of the Global Drug Policy Index released by the Harm Reduction Consortium? So index has been topped by New Zealand. Okay, I'm not so sure about that. I think India was definitely around the 18th rank only, which is correct. The Global Drug Policy Index is basically a new tool that offers the first ever data-driven global analysis of 30 countries' drug policies and their implementation in a systematic, comprehensive and transparent manner. Now, the index is composed of 75 indicators across uh, five broad dimensions of drug policy, such as absence of extreme responses, proportionality and criminal justice, harm reduction, access to medicine and development and then the mean score of the 2021 index is about 48 out of 100 for all the countries that have been considered here. So the options where I really have a problem is basically the topping of the index only. Let's try and look at the correct answer in this case. So it's not New Zealand, it's basically Norway which leads the index. Second is New Zealand, third is Portugal and the fourth is UK followed by Australia which are the top five countries on the humane and health driven drug policies that are there. India's rank is indeed 18th. Moving on to the next question, number 17, who's been appointed as the new DG of the CISF which is Central Industrial Security Force and the answer in this case happens to be Sheel Vardhan Singh. He's been appointed as the new CISF DG and the National Police Academy Director Atul Karwal has been appointed as the National Disaster Response Force DG. Right, so CISF will be Shil Vardhan Singh and NDRF will be your Atul Karwal and basically the 52nd raising day of CISF basically took place on 10th of March 2021. Right, so moving on to the next one. Basically, on 10th of November 2021, the Union Cabinet chaired by Sri Narendra Modi has approved the restoration and continuation of the MP LADS, which is basically the Member of Parliament Local Area Development Scheme uh, for the remaining part of the financial year 2021-2022 up to the financial year 2025-26. And this is coterminous with the period of the 15th Finance Commission, which was basically suspended in April 2020 because of COVID-19. So the scheme was restored for the remaining part of FY 2022 and for those periods, uh, basically the funds will be released at the rate of rupees 2 crore per MP in one installment. I think this is definitely correct. The scheme will continue till FY 26, that's true, uh, from FY 23 till FY 26 and the funds will be released under MP lads at the rate of rupees 7 crore per annum. I'm not sure if this was such a high amount uh, in two installments of 3.5 crore each. I think the amount was slightly lesser than this. The total financial implication of the uh, restoration and continuation of the MP lads for the remaining part of the financial year 2021-2022 
and up to 2025 2026 is basically rupees 17417 crore so i think this also is correct so the only option where i have a problem is option number 2 right and that is where you get that option 2 is incorrect uh, basically the amount allocated is 5 crore per annum per mp and two installments of 2.5 crores each okay moving on to the next question recently which country has become the 101st member of the intergovernmental treaty based international solar alliance so the answer in this case is the united states of america so it has become the 101st member so the isa or the international solar alliance which is headquartered in gurugram haryana is an intergovernmental organization formed by india and france to accelerate the global adoption of solar power so this was basically launched on 30th of november 2015 by our prime minister Sri Narendra modi and the former president of finance francois holland and this was basically at the cop 21 in paris france so that's the context on uh, the isa moving on to question number 20. Uh, it basically is talking about the road safety initiative rakshak so i don't think it was launched by andhra pradesh because the name does not ring a bell in that context it's the first of its kind state level program in the country where 30,000 volunteers staying or working at the eateries or different business establishments located near accident prone spots will be trained as first responders to road accidents makes a lot of sense right uh, a fund named solasium fund has been created in which accident victims of hit and run cases are eligible for compensation again a very noble initiative but i don't think it was andhra pradesh because the name does not ring a bell with that state so in that context yes rakshak is basically in the context of odisha and uh, Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik basically launched this initiative, right? So moving on to the next question, number 21, which of the following is incorrect uh, in the context of the Global Climate Change Performance Index, CCPI 2022, which was released by the German Watch on the sidelines of the COP26, which is the 26th Conference of Parties. So basically here the context is the first three overall positions remain empty as no country has done well enough to be basically in those positions. I think India is uh, ranked 12th on the index. I'm not so sure about this one. I think because India has done a lot of things from a climate change perspective. So I think it's slightly ranked better than this. Let's look at the next one. A CCPI stated India as close to achieving its NDC, which is basically talking about the nationally determined contribution target of around 40% share for the non-fossil fuel installed power capacity by 2030 and on course for the targeted 33 to 35% reduction in energy intensity by the same year. So I think uh, this is pretty much what India had agreed to and it's on target to achieve this. Now talking about the climate change performance index, it's an independent monitoring tool that was published annually since 2005 for tracking the climate protection performance of 60 countries and the European Union. This also seems to be correct. The climate protection performance of those countries, which together account for around 92% of the GHG emissions or the global greenhouse gas emissions, is basically assessed in four categories. One is GHG emissions, renewable energy, energy use, and climate policy. And obviously these uh, also overall consist of 14 indicators. So I think that is also correct. The only problem that I have is India is not ranked 12th. I think it's ranked better. So that's exactly the answer in this case. So the 10 best performing countries for the third year, India has retained its spot after 2020 and 2021 as well. So it's ranked 10th in the uh, CCPI 2022, right? So that is the context on 21st question. Moving on to 22nd. Uh, what was the theme at the United Nations World Science Day for Peace and Development observed on 10th of November 2021? So the idea here was building climate ready communities. That's the answer on this one. Right. So again, climate change is a very important thing that needs to be worked up. And that is where this particular theme was chosen. OK, moving on to question 23. Which digital payment company has launched the world's first merchant shareholding platform? Uh, on the merchants partners right so this is a very interesting and innovative way of giving uh, ownership to merchants as well and this was basically triggered by Bharat Pay in India and that's the answer in this question and this is basically a hundred million dollar worth program under which the company is basically offering its merchant customers an opportunity to buy Bharat Pay's equity shares and basically become a partner of the progress a very novel initiative from Bharat Pay indeed moving on to number 24 which of the following is the correct option for the recent cabinet approval by the state of Uttar Pradesh headed by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath? So the cabinet has basically approved the proposal to implement the Matru Bhumi Yojana to facilitate individuals or private institutions to contribute for the development of any village as per the Panchayati Raj Act 1947. I think this is correct. The cabinet also approved the proposals for rehabilitation of around 63 Hindu Bengali families displaced from East Pakistan in 1970 on around 121.41 hectares of land available with the 
Rehabilitation Department in the Bhasaya village in uh, Kanpur Dehat district. The cabinet has also approved the proposal for free distribution of oil, refined oil and food grains. Uh, the free distribution of food grains will be done from December 2021 till June 2022. So the only option where I feel a little uh, disgruntled here is the overall period of distribution. I think this is a slightly shorter duration overall. So if I look at the options, yes, so the free distribution of food grains will be done from December 2021 till March 2022. That's the answer on this front. So moving on to the next question, which space agency or company has planned to launch the Orbital Reef, a commercial space station between 2025 and 2030? So if I look at the options, SpaceX definitely looks to be very tempting because it's obviously a, a space agency and it's a commercial one and that. So Elon Musk and all that looks to be the possible answer, but that's not the answer in this case. It's Blue Origin and Blue Origin is basically a company or a space tourism company owned by Jeff Bezos of Amazon. And that has planned to launch the Orbital Reef, a commercial space station between 2025 and 2030. This 32,000 square feet station is said to be a mixed use business park in space that will basically host up to 10 people overall. That's the context on Blue Origin. Moving on to question 26. Which automaker company has joined UNGC, which is the United Nations Global Compact, the world's largest voluntary corporate sustainability initiative? And again, TVS Motors has taken the leads from that perspective as well, right? So this is basically uh, the first Indian two-wheeler and three-wheeler manufacturer to basically join the UNGC. That's the context. Moving on to number 27, who has been conferred the honorary rank of General of the Indian Army by President Ramnath Kovind at the ceremony at the Rashtrapati Bhavan? So the answer in this case is the Nepal Army Chief General Prabhu Ram Sharma who's basically been conferred with this title and it is in continuation with the tradition that was basically started way back in 1950. Moving on to the next question, number 28, which Indian has been elected to the International Law Commission, ILC, for a five-year term starting from 1st January 2023 to 2027? So the answer in this case happens to be Professor Bimal Patel and uh, the context here is that he's basically the Vice Chancellor of the Rashtriya Raksha University and a member of the National Security Advisory Board, NSA of India, right? And he's been elected for this five-year term at ILC. Moving on to question number 29, when will India host the first ever Yogasana World Championship? Ye kab hone wala hai? Obviously, 2022 hai hi. It is around June 2022 when this will be happening. And uh, essentially, the announcement for the same was made during India's first physical national yugasana sports championships that held in bhubaneswar odisha from november 11th to november 13th 2021 so wahan pe announcement hua tha but ye jo first ever yugasana world championship hone wala hai wo hoga june 2022 mein okay uh, where is india's first grass conservatory or germplasm conservation center being inaugurated so the answer in this case is almora uttarakhand that is where the first Grass con Conservatory or uh, Germplasm Conservation Center is there. It's spread over an acre of uh, area of two acres and it was inaugurated at Rani Khet at Almora district of Uttarakhand. The first forest healing center that's also at Rani Khet in uh, Kalika, Uttarakhand. First crypto game garden that's at Dioban area of Dehradun district, Uttarakhand again. And India's largest open air fernery that's basically again Rani Khet, Uttarakhand. So these are some of the developments from that front. So moving on to question number 31. Which Indian origin astronaut among the four in SpaceX's Crew 3 mission were there on the International Space Station essentially? So the answer in this case is Raja Chari. So the context here is that on November 10th, 2021, SpaceX's Crew 3 mission carried four astronauts, NASA's Raja Chari, who's of Indian origin, then Tom Marshburn, then uh, Kayla Barron, and then European Space Agency's Matthias Maurer on a 22-hour flight from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and that was docked successfully to the International Space Station. So that's the context on this one. Let's move on to the next question, 32. We're talking about the International Cricket Council T20 World Cup tournament concluding on 14th of November 2021. So the tournament was organized in UAE, Oman, yes. Australia defeated New Zealand in the finals, yes. Aaron Finch was not the player of the tournament, it was David Warner. So that's the correct answer in this case. Option one and two are definitely correct. Okay, so moving on to the next question, 33. Uh, basically talking about the World Diabetes Day. So it's basically observed on 14th of November every year. I think that's correct. So the day was observed to raise awareness of diabetes as a global health issue and uh, effective uh, responsibility to be undertaken collectively and individually for better prevention, diagnosis and management of the condition. And this, the theme was basically access to diabetes care for the period 2021 to 2023. 2021 basically celebrates the 100th year of insulin discovery and highlights a huge gap between the people who need access to insulin to control their diabetes 
along with the essential technologies such as uh, blood glucose meters and test strips. So there's a definite gap from that perspective, right? So additional trivia on this is that on this day, famous buildings and monuments all over the world are lit up in blue to spread the message about the World Diabetes Day to the people, right? So the blue circle is the global symbol for diabetes awareness. Okay, moving on to question number 34. Which payment service has basically launched an artificial intelligence powered voice trading which will enable the users to do trade or get information about stocks via a single voice command. So the answer in this case happens to be Paytm, Paytm money that's what you're talking about and Paytm money is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Paytm which basically launched the uh, AI powered voice trading right that's the context. Right so moving on to the next question 35 which of the following is the incorrect option for the first ever Janjatiya Gaurav Divas basically tribal pride day which is observed on 15th of November 2021. So the day marks the birth anniversary of Amar Shaheed Bhagwan Birsa Munda or Birsa Munda, a tribal leader who basically fought against British rule in India. Several events and programs will be organized from the 15th to 22nd of November as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav to pay respects to the tribal freedom fighters. PM Modi has virtually inaugurated the Bhagwan Birsa Munda Memorial Udyan come Freedom Fighter Museum. Basically, Bhagwan Birsa Munda Smriti Udyan Saha Swatantrata Senani Sangrahalai at Jamshedpur Jharkhand. I'm not so sure about that. I think it was Ranchi. Uh, Birsa Munda was basically uh, born on 15th of November 1875 in the Ulihatu village in Jharkhand. And on the occasion of the first Janjatiya Gaurav Divas, PM Modi also inaugurated the redeveloped uh, Rani Kamlapati Railway Station, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. The Habib Ganj Railway Station, which was also renamed after Rani Kamlapati, the first gone queen of Bhopal. That's the context as far as the options are concerned. I think the only incorrect option is C. And this was not Jamshedpur Jharkhand, but this was Ranchi Jharkhand. That's the context on this one. Moving on to 36. Recently, the Madhya Pradesh government has approved the Mukhya Mantri Udyam Kranti Yojana to connect the educated youths of the state with self-employment. Now, which of the options are to be chosen? Now, the benefit of the scheme will be available to minimum class 12th pass use to the state between the ages of uh, 18 to 35. I think it's more than 35. It's not 35 alone. So it's slightly higher than that. Now the projects ranging from 1 lakh to rupees 50 lakh for the manufacturing units and uh, 1 lakh to 25 lakhs for the servicing units or retail businesses will be approved under the scheme. Uh, it doesn't provide a 5% uh, interest subsidy. That's quite a higher number. I think it's a lower number than that. And loan guarantee shall be provided to the beneficiaries at the prevailing rate of a maximum of 7 years on the credit dispersed by the state government. So if I look at it, I think first one definitely is incorrect. And uh, I also believe that the third one in terms of interest subsidy is also incorrect. So the only one which is correct is option number two. So let's try and look at the answer. Yes, option two is the one which is the uh, correct answer. Now, if I look at the age, it's 18 to 40 years and the interest subsidy is 3% per annum and not 5%. That's the context. Moving on to question number 37. Which state government has launched the Dware ration or the ration at the doorstep scheme which will benefit around 10 crores of people of the state? So the answer in this case, Dware sounds uh, more from the uh, eastern side. All the states are here only. I think the answer in this case is West Bengal. And that's the correct one. So that is the context. So basically around 10 crore people of the state will be benefited and the government is spending rupees 160 crores on this front. Okay, moving on to the next question, 38. Talking about the United Nations World Tourism Organization's Best Tourism Village Pilot Initiative. So the Pachampalli village in uh, Yadadri Bhuvanagari district of Telangana has been selected as uh, the best tourism villages, as one of the best tourism villages. Three Indian villages, namely Ladhpura Khas, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Kongthong village, Meghalaya and uh, Pachampalli village, Telangana were nominated for uh, UNWTO's best tourism villages. Now, the best tourism village initiative basically includes five pillars. So I think this is the incorrect one. If I remember correctly, there were three pillars on this front. So the correct answer here is that options one and two are definitely correct. So which are the three pillars? So one was your best tourism villages under uh, uh, UNWTO label, which is basically talking about the economic, social and environment angle. Then the best tourism villages by uh, UNWTO upgrade program. So villages which could not make it, but have the potential and uh, they will be provided an upgrade option and then the best tourism villages by UNWTO in terms of providing them a network. So these are the three primary pillars here. Moving on to question number 39. International Students Day is observed on which date? The answer is November 17th by the student community across the globe. So moving on to the next question. According to the World Bank report uh, titled World Bank's Remittance Prices Worldwide Database, what is the uh, annual amount of remittances received by India in 2021 in dollar billion? So the answer here is $87 billion that India has received as remittance and United States was the biggest source which accounted for 20% of these funds. Moving on to the next question. Which country becomes the first to be virtual reality embassy on the metaverse? So on the metaverse, the first country to do a virtual reality is uh, 
Barbados and uh, it's a Caribbean island nation and it's the first virtual reality embassy that's happened on metaverse right that's the context it's the first sovereign nation to do so moving on to the next question which of the following is the incorrect option for the survey named IPF citizen satisfaction survey on smart policing 2021 launched by the smart policing so the smart policing idea was introduced in 2014 by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi at the conference of DGPs of the state and central police organizations to transform the Indian police to be smart. Now, as per the survey, Odisha and Telangana have the highest smart policing index. I'm not so sure about Odisha and Telangana. I think it's Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And uh, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar scored the lowest uh, in terms of uh, the value, 5.81 and 5.74 respectively. A survey was undertaken uh, for all states and union territories on the basis of people's opinions and perceptions related to the 12 indicators out of which six were linked to competence, three to values and three to public trust. I think three indicators for public trust doesn't make any sense. I think uh, this number is less. So I think this option is also incorrect. So if I look at it, uh, only option one appears to be the one which is uh, correct. So if I talk about it, uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana top the list and then there are 10 indicators, not 12. And there is one indicator focusing on public trust. Okay, moving on to 43. Uh, talking about the annual status of education report ASA, right? So that's the context. The children's enrollment in government schools has increased from 65.8% to 72.3%. I think this number is slightly higher uh, in the options shown here. Overall number is I think 70 if I remember correctly. The enrollment in private schools has dipped for the first time in recent years from 28.8% in 2020 to 24.4% in 2021. So that also seems to be okay. In case of the digital divide, 26.1% of the children with smartphones at home have no access to the device. And that's a sorry state of affairs as far as India is concerned. So I think the only option which is incorrect here is option number one, which obviously means that options two and three are indeed correct. So if I look at option number one, it's not 72.3, but it is 70.3% in 2021. Okay. And this number was basically 64.3% in 2018. Okay. Moving on to question number 44. Women's Entrepreneurship Day, WED, is basically observed on which date? That's basically November 19th. And that is to celebrate em uh, and empower and support women entrepreneurs and businesses across the world. So this was first held on November 19th, 2014 and observed in 144 countries that year. Moving on to the question number 45. Which Indian badminton player was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award? So obviously it has to be someone who spent a lot of time and is probably retired from the game. Uh, and this was from the Badminton World Federation. So the answer in this case happens to be Prakash Padukone. Okay, moving on to the next question. Who is the author of the book titled India versus UK, the story of an unprecedented diplomatic win? So the answer in this case is Syed Akparuddin, who's authored this book. And the context is that it uh, features the behind the scene details of India's victory against the United Kingdom in the elections to the International Court of Justice in 2017. That's the context here. Moving on to question number 47. Resolved, United Nations in a divided world is an autobiography of which of these following leaders? It has to be obviously a leader who's retired. So the context is that it is Ban Ki-moon. That's the correct answer. Antonio Guterres is the current UN Secretary General. Ban Ki-moon is a past UN Secretary General, right? That's the context. Okay, so now moving on to question number Number 48. Recently, the President of India, Ramnath Kovind, felicitated the awardees of the cleanest cities of India at the Swachh Amrit Mahotsav, hosted as part of the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs Mohua at Vigyan Bhavan, New Delhi. A total of 4320 cities participated in the 2021 edition of the Swachh Sarvekshan or SS with over 5 crores of citizens' feedback compared to only 1.87 crores feedback that was there in 2020. The award ceremony was organized to recognize the work done for Swachhita by towns or cities, states and union territories under various initiatives of the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban, uh, such as Swachh Sarvekshan 2021 6th edition, uh, Safai Mitra Suraksha Challenge and the certifications for garbage free star rating for the cities. More than 300 awards were given under various categories. For the fifth consecutive year, Indore Madhya Pradesh was awarded the title of India's cleanest city under SS 2021. Now, talking about SS 2021, Madhya Pradesh bagged the highest number of awards. There's a total of 92. So I think the cleanest city Indore went to MB, but I don't think it was MB which bagged the highest number of awards. I think the total 92 awards were bagged by Maharashtra, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And this was followed by Chhattisgarh, which basically bagged 67 awards. That's the context, right? So moving on to question number 49. Which of the following is the incorrect option for the first sustainable development goal, urban index and dashboard 2021-2022 released by Niti Ayog? 
So it's an SDG progress monitoring tool at the ULB level or the urban local body level. This makes a lot of sense. This was launched uh, basically as a result of uh, Niti Aayog, GIZ and BMZ collaboration under the umbrella of Indo-German Development Cooperation. The SDG urban index and dashboard rank basically 56 urban areas on 77 SDG indicators covering 46 global SDG targets across 15 sustainable development goals. Talking about it, Kaimbatur, Tamil Nadu has topped the index. Uh, I'm not so sure if this was the actual result. I don't think Kaimbatur topped the index. According to the index, 55 urban areas basically assessed under SDG 2, that is basically talking about zero hunger, have a 25% anemia prevalence among the women aged 15 to 49 years. So all of these options seem correct except option D. So in this case, Shimla, Himachal Pradesh is the one which has topped the index followed by Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. That's the context on the question number 49. Right, so moving on to the next question, number 50, talking about the correct option for the 2021 list of global systemically important banks, GSIBs, identified by FSB or the Financial Stability Board in consultation with BCBS, which is the Basel Committee for Banking Supervision and National Authorities, right? So the answer in this case is JP Morgan Chase has definitely topped the list and was named the world's most systemically important bank and this is for the third time. The list is basically made on the end 2020 data and the updated assessment methodology published by BCBS in July 2013 that also seems to be correct. Number of banks identified as GSIBs, I don't think this is the correct number, this appears to be too high a number, I think the number of banks identified as global systemically important banks is less than that, so this option should definitely be incorrect so essentially yeah one and two are correct the number of banks identified as gsips is 30 that's the correct answer in this case moving on to question number 51 who has become the first uh, indian to be honored with the knighthood of Parthik Guelfa for his humanitarian and environmental protection efforts in both business as well as movies so the answer in this case is dr sk sohan roy who basically is the chief executive officer and founder of the aries group of companies and he has become the first one to be uh, honored with the knighthood of Parthik Guelfa for his uh, humanitarian and environmental protection efforts in business and movies. Moving on to 52. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, basically laid the foundation stone for NIA, which is the Noida International Airport or the Jewar Airport at Jewar Uttar Pradesh. Uh, which of the following is incorrect with respect to this project? Uh, this is planned in 1334 hectares in the Yeda, which is the Yamuna Expressway International Development Authority notified area of the district of Gautam Buddha Nagar, UP. It will be India's first net zero emissions effort if I'm not mistaken. So I think this is the wrong option. Once operational, UP will become the state with maximum uh, airports. That is basically five and Kerala will be there in the second position with four airports. The airport is being developed by the concessionaire uh, YIAPL, which is your Yamuna International Airport Private Limited, which is a 100% subsidiary of the Zurich International Airport AG, Clotten, Switzerland. The project will basically be completed in four phases. Now, as per the concession agreement, the first phase will have a capacity to serve around 1.2 crore passengers a year. And basically work on it is basically scheduled to be completed by 29th of September, 2024. So I think the only incorrect option here is option B. It is going to be India's first net zero emissions airport. Okay, moving on to question number 53. Talking about the RCA or the River Cities Alliance, right? And this is basically the first of its kind alliance in the world. So talking about this alliance is basically launched after the collaboration of two entities. That is the National Mission for Clean Ganga, part of the Ministry of Jal Shakti and the National Institute for Urban Affairs, part of Mohua, which is the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So this alliance has been launched by Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu. I'm not so sure about this one. Its secretariat will be set up at NIUA, which is the... Uh, National Institute for Urban Affairs with the NMCG support. This also seems to be correct. I think the only incorrect option is option two. Let's try and look at the answer. So this was basically inaugurated by uh, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, the Ministry of Jal Shakti, launched the first of its kind alliance on the River Cities Alliance front. Okay, moving on to question number 54. Which of the following is incorrect for the first ever National Multidimensional Poverty Index, MPI, uh, in terms of its baseline report for 2021 released by the Niti Aayog. Bihar and Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh ranked as the poorest states in India. I think that's okay. Goa has the lowest poverty across India. I think this may be incorrect. I think uh, I think Kerala is the answer, if I'm not mistaken. It's been developed by Niti Aayog in consultation with 12 line ministries and in partnership with the state governments and the index publishing agencies, which is your Oxford University's Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, OPHI, and UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Program. Now, it has basically three equally weighted dimensions health, education and standard of living, which is basically represented by 12 indicators 
around nutrition, child and adolescent mortality, antenatal care, years of schooling, school attendance, cooking fuel, sanitation, drinking water, electricity, housing, assets and bank accounts. All these are the 12 indicators. Puducherry has the lowest poverty among the union territories. I think this is also correct. The only problem I have is that I think it's not Goa, which is the correct answer. It's Kerala. Kerala has the lowest poverty across India at 0.71% in terms of this index, followed by Goa, then Sikkim, then Tamil Nadu, and then Punjab. These are the top five. Right. Moving on to the next question, 55. Which of the following is the incorrect option with respect to the internal working group IWG of the Reserve Bank of India to review extent ownership guidelines and corporate structure of the Indian private sector banks? So on 12th of June 2020, RBI has basically set up a five-member IWG headed by the Central Board Director of RBI, Prasanna Kumar Mohanty. Now, uh, after examining the comments, uh, RBI basically has accepted uh, not 19, but 21 out of the 33 recommendations made by the internal working group, if I remember correctly. So no changes made in the initial lock-in requirement, which may continue as a minimum of 40% of the paid-up uh, voting equity share capital of the bank for the first five years. Universal banks are basically allowed to continue to be listed within six years of commencement of operations and the promoters are basically allowed to choose to bring down the holding below 26% anytime after the five-year lock-in period is over. So I think all of these are correct. Only incorrect option is option B, wherein 21 of the recommendations have been accepted and the remaining are still under consideration or examination. Moving on to 56. Incorrect with respect to Constitution Day, also known as the Samvidhan Divas. So, Constitution Day, also known as Samvidhan Divas, is annually observed across India on 26th of November to commemorate the adoption of the Constitution of India by the Constituent Assembly of India on 26th of November 1949, if I remember correctly. So, on 19th of November 2015, the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment notified the decision of the Indian government to observe 26th November of every year as the Constitution Day or Samvidhan Divas. Constitution Day 2021 is celebrated at the Central Hall of the Parliament as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. The Constitution of India is the longest written constitution in the world. It took around 2 years, 11 months and 17 days to complete the constitution. So on 29th of August 1947 under the chairmanship of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the drafting committee was constituted to prepare a draft constitution. That's the overall context. So I think the only incorrect option here is option A because the Adoption of the Constitution of India happened on 26 November 1949 and not 1950. That's the context. Okay, moving on to the next question. National Organ Donation Day is observed on November 27th to recognize the importance of this and uh, uh, the value of organ donors in the world. Moving on to 58. Which state government has launched a pilot of India's first medicine delivery via eVTOL, which is your virtual takeoff and landing drone, Aquila X2. This is again a brilliant initiative and that is done by Meghalaya. That's the context and uh, this basically drone delivers medicines to the remote PHCs or the primary health centers. Moving on to 59, Dr. Jitendra Singh, the Union Minister for State, uh, independent charge for the Ministry of Science and Technology, has inaugurated the Swadesh, the world's first multimodal brain imaging data and analytics. Right. So talking about project uh, Swadesh, it was developed by the Department of Biotechnology National Brain Research Center, a deemed university for brain research Haryana. Swadesh is basically a unique brain initiative which will focus on certified neuroimaging, neurochemical, neuropsychological data and analytics that are made accessible to researchers for managing brain disorders. The project Swadesh basically proposes a big data architecture that can manage and analyze six modules talking about neurodegenerative, neuropsychiatric, neurodevelopmental, COVID-19 related disorders, other disorders and also the healthy subjects overall. So I think all the options in this case are indeed correct about Project Swadesh. Okay, moving on to the next question, number 60. Indian Railways is constructing the world's tallest railway bridge fire across the river Ijai near the Noni Valley. Uh, basically crossing at a pure height of 141 meters in Manipur, India as part of a 111 kilometer long Jiribam Imphal railway project. Now the construction of the bridge will be completed by December 2024. I think uh, the construction is expected to be completed a little earlier. The total cost of the bridge is estimated at Rs 374 crore. The bridge will basically surpass the record of 139 meters high Mala Rijeka Viaduct on the Belgrade Bar Railway in Montenegro, Europe. So this will basically become the tallest in terms of that record. So the answer in this case is of course option 2 and 3 are correct. Uh, the construction of the bridge is expected to be completed by 
December 2023 as per the guidelines that have been released. Okay, moving on to question 61. Which of the following is the incorrect option for the 52nd edition of Asia's oldest and largest film festival, which is basically the IFI or the International Film Festival of India, which was held in Goa. So now context is that uh, it was organized jointly by the Directorate of Film Festivals under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and the Entertainment Society of Goa as part of the government of Goa and of course the Indian film industry. Now the Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting Anurag Singh Thakur basically announced the Indian Film Personality of the Year Award for 2021 which is basically conferred on Hema Malini. Obviously she is an actor and an MP from Mathura, Uttar Pradesh and also to Prasoon Joshi, a lyricist and the chairperson of the Central Board for Film Certification. Now the opening film of the 52nd IFI was basically Carlos Sora's King of All the World, basically titled El Rey de Todo El Mundo. Now the Golden Peacock film uh, in terms of the award was basically conferred on what Charlotte? I think that's not the correct answer in this case. So the Hungarian film director Estevan Sabo and the American film director, producer, screenwriter, actor, whatever you may want to call this guy, he's an amazing guy, Martin Scorsese. They were basically conferred with the Satyajit Ray Lifetime Achievement Award for their contribution to world cinema. So all of these seem to be correct except option D because the Golden Peacock Award in terms of the best film was basically given to Ring Wandering directed by Masakazu Kaneko of Japan. Right, moving on to question number 62. Who's become the first female Prime Minister of Sweden? Whenever I say Sweden, uh, I think the answer always comes in, let's say, double S. That's the context. So I'm a, getting a hunch here that this should be Eva Magdalena Andersson and that indeed is the correct answer. And she's part of the Social Democratic Party and has won her second election and became the first female Prime Minister of Sweden. Okay, moving on to question 63. Appointed as the new CEO of Twitter, we've discussed this in the previous session as well. Parag Agarwal becomes the new CEO of Twitter and takes over from Jack Dorsey. Right, so talking about the next question. Union Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Rajesh Bhushan, released the findings of the national health accounts in terms of estimates for India for the period 2017-18. So talking about the options in this case, is this the 8th consecutive NHA report? I think uh, that much time has not elapsed. This is definitely not the 8th consecutive NHA report produced by NHSRC, uh, designated as National Health Accounts Technical Secretariat in 2014 by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So I think it's not the 8th, it's definitely lesser than that. The government OOPE, which is your out-of-pocket expenditure as share of the total health expenditure has dropped to 48.8% in 2017-18 versus 64.2% which was there in 2013-14. The share of primary health care in the current government health expenditure has basically increased from 51.1% that was there earlier to 54.7% in 2017-18. So both these numbers seem to be correct. But this was not the 8th consecutive NHA report. This is the 5th consecutive NHA report that I can understand. Okay, moving on to the next question, 65. The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment announced the formation of a three-member committee to review the annual income criteria for the economically weaker section, EWS reservations, in terms of jobs and central education institutes. So the committee will now review the rupees 8 lakh uh, family annual income ceiling for EWS to apply for the 10% reserved seats in central education institutes and government jobs. The 10% EWS quota was basically introduced under the 101st Constitutional Amendment 2019. And the three-member committee uh, basically includes uh, Ajay Bhushan Pandey, former finance secretary, Professor V.K. Malhotra, member secretary of ICSSR, which is the Indian Council for Social Science Research, and Sanjeev Sayal, the uh, principal economic advisor to the Indian government as the member convener. So if I were to look at it, I think uh, one and three definitely seem to be correct, but the 10% EWS quota was introduced in the 103rd constitutional amendment, if I am not mistaken. So that's the uh, correct answer. The option two is definitely incorrect. So 10% was basically in the... 103rd constitutional amendment that was there in 2019. That's the correct answer in this case. So talking about the next question, which is the 2021 word of the year by the Mariam Webster dictionary. Again, the word is vaccine. So if I have to look at it, we obviously saw that from the context of Oxford as well. Oxford dictionary basically had vax and the Collins dictionary basically word of the year is NFT, right? So which is the non-fungible tokens, right? So those are the major words that came out in 2021. Moving on to 67, who's won the seventh Dr. M.S. Swaminathan Award for the period 2017-19. So the answer in this case is V. Praveen Rao, Vice Chancellor of uh, Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agricultural University. He's won the award for 2017-19. So it's basically a biennial national award uh, that is presented by retired ICAR or the Indian Council for Agricultural Research Employee Association and the Nuziviru Seeds Limited. So that's the context for this particular award and V. Praveen Rao has won it for this period. 
Moving on to question number 68. During the COP26 summit, the Indian Prime Minister has committed that India will aim to attain net zero emissions by obviously a long period of time. So that is 2070. That's the target overall for us. So the context is that the COP26 uh, basically was held at Glasgow, Scotland and uh, PM Narendra Modi has basically set five ambitious targets for India in terms of combating global climate change and one of them is to attain net zero emissions by 2070. Okay, moving on to question number 69. Which country along with India has launched the first green grids initiative, the One Sun, One World, One Grid. This is what it's called on the sidelines of the COP26 summit. So the answer in this case is the United Kingdom. So the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi and his British counterpart, Boris Johnson, basically launched the first in the context of the world, GGI Oso Wog on the sidelines of the COP26 summit. Okay, moving on to question number 70. Which country will host the upcoming session of the conference COP27 in 2022? So the answer in this case is Egypt. That was basically chosen to host the upcoming session of the conference COP27 in 2022. And UAE will basically host the COP28 in 2023. Okay, moving on to the next one. Which countries uh, basically has or have led the first of its kind alliance of governments basically named Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance? So the answer in this case, if I remember correctly, is uh, it was started by Costa Rica and Denmark. So the answer is option A and B. So they are the ones who basically started this on the sidelines of uh, COP26, right? And Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance. This was later joined by other countries like France, Greenland, Ireland, Sweden, Wales and the Canadian province of Quebec as well. So that's the context as far as uh, Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance BOGA is concerned. Moving on to question number 72. Uh, which program for small island nations has been launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the COP26, right? So here, the launch was basically IRIS, which is the Infrastructure for Resilient Island States, right? So that was the one which was... Uh, uh, launched by Prem Narendra Modi and it's a key uh, India-led initiative to boost the infrastructure in the small island nations. Now the new program for the small island states is basically part of CDRI which is the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and that's also an Indian initiative announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the UN General Assembly in 2019. So CDRI announced in 2019 and IRIS was basically announced as part of COP26. Moving on to question 73. According to the SBI research report, uh, compared to 2018, the share of the informal sector shrunk from what percentage to just 15 to 20 percent? So the answer in this case is that from 52.4, it basically shrunk to 15 to 20 percent, right? So the SBI research report was towards the digitization drive and the pandemic situation of the gig economy obviously have led to the faster formalization of the economy. So compared to 2018, the share of the informal sector basically shrunk from 52.4% to just 15 to 20%. That's the context here. Moving on to question number 74 with regards to the Ayurveda Day. So Ayurveda Day is observed annually across the globe on uh, Dhanvantri Jayanti or Dhantiras, the festival of Dhanvantri. The Ayurveda Day 2021 basically falls on... Uh, 2nd of November 2021 obviously marks the observance of the 6th Ayurveda day in India. The theme for Ayurveda day is basically Ayurveda for portions. So all these options are indeed correct. And so in September 2016, the Ministry of Ayush, which is your Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, Sova Rigpa and Homeopathy announced its decision to annually celebrate the Dhanvantri Jayanti or Dhanteras as the National Ayurveda day. Okay, moving on to question number 75. Uh, where was the Desert Warrior 2021, a two-day Air Force exercise between Egypt and India organized? So this was basically organized at the El Beringat Air Base in Egypt. So the context is that this was done to basically uh, enhance mutual understanding and share the operational experience between the two countries. Okay, moving on to question number 76. The Department of Telecommunications under the Ministry of Communications has formed a technology innovation group on the 6th generation of 6G to take lead in the development of 6G technology globally. So K. Rajaram, uh, the Chairman of Digital Communications uh, Commission and Secretary Telecom has been named as the Chairperson of the initiative. I think this is correct. The Technology Innovation Group is a 12-member group. I think it's a significantly larger number of members in the group. So I think this is wrong. Uh, the 6G technology is set to make its first commercial move before 2030. Yes, that's expectation on this front. So the answer in this case, of course, is that only option 2 is incorrect. The Technology Innovation Group basically has a 22-member group. Right, so moving on to the next question, number 77. Who won the prestigious Booker Prize 2021 for fiction for the novel The Promise? So the answer in this case is uh, 
Damon Galguth who basically won the award for this book. Okay, moving on to the next one. That's uh, basically 77. RBI has permitted the foreign portfolio investors to invest in debt securities issued by both Invits as well as REITs, which is your infrastructure investment trust and your real estate investment trust. So that's the answer in this case. Right. So moving on to the next question now, number 79. Uh, so talking about the white paper, namely Mission 2070, a green new deal for a net zero India that was released by the World Economic Forum. So a green new deal for India can basically add dollar one trillion to the GDP by 2030. This is correct. 10 trillion by 2050. I don't think this was the number and also the year seems to be incorrect because your target is 2070. That's the context uh, with the potential of creating more than 50 million new jobs. This also seems to be fine. Report has been prepared in collaboration with Kearney India and Observer Research Foundation. This seems to be fine. As per the projection, India's GDP may grow above the world average between 2013 and 2040 at about 6.5 percent per annum this also seems to be okay so the only option i have a problem with is option one so options two and three indeed are correct so the green new deal for india can basically add 1 trillion to gdp by 2030 but 15 trillion will be added to the gdp by 2070 that's the expectation right so that's the correction as far as option one is concerned right so now moving on to question number 80 you're talking about uh, the first global hackathon launched by RBI named Harbinger 2021 Innovation for Transformation. So it has been organized under the theme Smarter Digital Payments. Yes, the hackathon was launched to encourage innovation in the payment systems. And basically it includes four problem statements to shape the future of the payment systems in India. Absolutely. The hackathon is owned and sponsored by RBI and is hosted on the Apex or the Application Programming Interface Exchange platform. So I think all the three options in this case are indeed correct. So that is basically Harbinger launched by RBI recently. That's the context with four problem statements for various kinds of uh, uh, startups or uh, entrepreneurial organizations to look at targeting, right? That's the context on 80, moving on to 81. The fourth Scorpion submarine of Project 75, Yard 11878 was delivered to the Indian Navy, which of the context is correct here. It will be commissioned as INS Vagshi. I don't think it's INX Vagshi. I think it's Vela. Uh, current three submarines under Project 75 are functional, which basically is talking about the Indian Navy that is INS Karanj, INS Kalwari and INS Khanderi. Project 75 basically includes construction of eight submarines of uh, Scorpion design by Mazagon Dock Ship Builders Mumbai in collaboration with MS Naval Group of France. So if I look at it, I'm also not convinced about the eight submarines. I think the number was slightly lesser in that context. So I'm tempted towards saying that only option two is the correct one. Yes, so uh, talking about the fourth Scorpion submarine of uh, Project 75 that was basically delivered to India will be commissioned as INS or Indian Naval Ship Vela. So Vela basically refers to the weapon that Lord Kartikeya carries and uh, uh, that's the context here. And it basically includes six submarines and not eight of the Scorpion design. That's the context here. So only option two is correct. Right, so moving on to the next question, number 82, who's been appointed as India's new Chief of Naval Staff. So the answer in this case is Vice Admiral R. Hari Kumar. And uh, the Defence Ministry appointed uh, VCR Harikumar, the Chief of Western Naval Command, as India's new Chief of Naval Staff, who will take over from uh, basically CNS Admiral Karambir Singh from November 30th, 2021 onwards. Okay, moving on to number 83, who's been appointed or elected as the Prime Minister of Japan. So the answer in this case is Fumio Kishida. And uh, he's basically the leader of the Liberal Democratic Party, has been re elected as the Prime Minister of Japan following the victory of LDP in the 2021 parliamentary elections. Moving on to 84, talking about the third regional security dialogue on Afghanistan that was hosted by India in New Delhi. The meeting saw high level participants uh, from six countries. I think the number of countries is higher uh, where the Delhi declaration was adopted by the countries to promote terrorism free inclusive government in Afghanistan. The declaration was also known as the Delhi Regional Security Dialogue on Afghanistan of National Security Advisors or Secretaries of Security Councils also is fine. So essentially option three itself tells me that option one is incorrect because there are eight countries here, India, Russia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. They were the ones who participated while China and uh, Pakistan stayed away from the meeting. So eight were there. So technically if I look at it, uh, uh, option one is the one which is incorrect, right? So the context here is that there were eight. India, Russia, all of these that were basically part of it and Pakistan and China stayed away from the meeting. That's the context on question 84. Moving to 85 now. Uh, recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has virtually launched two customer centric initiatives of the Reserve Bank of India, which is basically RBI Retail Direct. Uh, this is a scheme, of course, for allowing greater participation in the government securities and RBI Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. So which of the following uh, is the incorrect option in that context? New schemes will basically unlock 
dollar 1.8 trillion bond market to the retail buyers in the government bond sector i think this number is incorrect i think it was 1.1 if i'm not mistaken the rbi after review decided to integrate the three current ombudsman schemes that are there which are the ombudsman schemes in place right now banking ombudsman scheme that was launched in 2006 ombudsman scheme for nbfcs that was launched in 2018 and ombudsman scheme for digital transactions that was launched in 2019 all three have been brought under the one integrated ombudsman scheme now okay so rbi retail direct scheme which will basically act as a medium for your small investors such as middle class employees small businessmen and senior citizens to have their small savings directly and securely into government securities that will basically be issued both by the central and state governments this definitely is fine uh, the pm stated that the reserve bank integrated ombudsman scheme is based on one nation one ombudsman again makes a lot of sense under the rbi retail direct scheme the retail individual investors will be able to open a retail direct gilt account rdg account with the reserve bank of india using the online portal rbiretaildirect.org.in i think this is also correct so the only problem i have is with option a which is not 1.8 trillion but you're talking about a 1.1 dollar trillion bond market that will be now open to the retail buyers right so moving on to the next question we're talking about uh, the niramay gujarat yojana right so the scheme was launched during the function in palanpur city in gujarat and targets to cover over 3 crore citizens of gujarat it has been launched to protect people over 35 years from non communicable disease i think this is too long a period i think the duration is a little lesser uh, it's expected to provide free medical checkups to eligible citizens at the primary and community health centers to diagnose for various non communicable diseases all these seem to be fine only option 2 is the problematic area for me and this is basically for 30 years and not 35 years so that is basically on the niramay gujarat yojana moving on to 87 who has virtually launched india's first digital food museum in tanjavur tamil nadu the temptation is to go with mk stalin but that's not correct the answer is piyush ved prakash goel uh, uh, who's the union minister and he's basically launched uh, uh, virtually launched india's first digital food museum in tanjavur tamil nadu it's basically a 1860 square feet museum co developed by fci and the visveswaraya industrial and technological museums bangalore and uh, the initial estimated outlay basically is around 1.1 crore rupees okay moving on to question 88 now the india's ministry of earth sciences basically launched the 41st indian scientific expedition to antarctica uh, 41st ic as it is called in november 2021 so the expedition has 48 members leaving for winter at antarctica and return the vessel will basically bring back the members of the 40th expedition Uh, i don't think there are two permanent research base uh, stations in antarctica but there are three uh, so obviously maitri and bharti are uh, definitely two of them there's one more uh, we'll talk about that in a bit and then the national center for polar and ocean research ncpor goa an autonomous institute under the ministry of earth sciences manages the indian antarctic program so that's the context i think three is also correct one is also correct so only option two appears to be the incorrect option in this case so there are basically three permanent research base stations in antarctica namely dakshin gangotri 1983 maitri 1988 and bharati 2021 so currently maitri and bharati are the ones which are fully operational at this point in time okay moving on to the next question now 89 sebi basically has given the nod to the uh, scheme named invesco india basically invesco coin shares global blockchain exchange traded fund uh, which is a fund of fund now it will not be india's second scheme that offers exposure to global companies participating in the blockchain ecosystem it will be the first such scheme of its type and it's an open ended scheme that invests in ireland domiciled invesco coin shares global blockchain uh, etf and the new fund offer will open to indian investors between 24th of november and 8th december so all of this is correct so it's not india's second scheme that offers exposure to global companies but it is the first scheme right so that's the only correction required okay so the options 2 and 3 are indeed correct moving on to question number 90 the border roads organization has received the guinness world record for basically constructing and black topping the world's highest motorable road passing through the 19024 feet 0.73 inches or basically 5798.251 meters high which pass in the union territory of ladakh so the answer in this case is umlingla pass in ladakh that's the context moving on to the next question uh, talking about the first ever audit divas observed by the comptroller and auditor general of india so this is basically observed on 16th of november 2021 so the institute of cag was formed on 16th november 1860 with edmund drummond as the first auditor general of india i think this is also correct during the event of the first audit divas prime minister narendra modi inaugurated a statue of sardar vallabh bhai patel at the cag office in delhi so i think all the three options in this case are indeed correct so this is basically the context now moving on to the next question 
which of the following is incorrect option for the 2021 trace bribery risk matrix also known as the trace matrix released by trace international india has indeed been ranked at the 82nd position i don't think norway has topped the index but it is pretty close to the top trace matrix was originally developed in 2014 in collaboration with rand corporation that's also correct matrix was basically formed by aggregating data obtained from uh, leading public interest and international organizations including the united nations world bank vdem institute at the university of gothenburg and the world economic forum so all this also is correct the trace matrix basically measures the business bribery risk in 194 jurisdictions territories and autonomous and semi-autonomous regions and basically provides an overall risk score and risk source in essentially four domains uh, the four domains primarily looking at business interactions with government, anti-bribery, deterrence and enforcement, government and civil service transparency and the last one being capacity for civil society oversight. So all these seem to be correct. Uh, so only problem I have is that the Norway I don't think has topped the index. The index was basically topped by Denmark and uh, the risk scores basically range from 1 to 100 with obviously the lower the risk score obviously the lesser the chance for bribery right that's the context overall so denmark topped the index india was way below at 82nd moving on to the 93rd question recently the rbi has revealed a draft scheme for amalgamating the punjab and maharashtra cooperative bank we've discussed this enough number of times so the answer is usfb or the unity small finance bank moving on to question number 94 Incorrect with respect to GNR 2021, which is the 2021 Global Nutrition Report, the state of global nutrition. So the report basically states that India is on course to meet five of the 13 global nutrition targets. So I think it's not five, it's I think only three of the global nutrition targets that are there that India will be able to meet. So if you look at option B, it's a no-brainer that 2021 report indicates that India is off course in meeting the other global nutrition targets obviously uh, there are certain which it's in a position to meet others it is not in a position to meet so this is a fairly straightforward statement india is among the 161 countries that have made no progress or are worsening in terms of reducing anema okay this is a stark situation for india and again in india around 58 percent of the infants between the age group 0 to 5 months are exclusively breastfed this is also fine in 2020 around 53 percent of the indian women were anemic again a stark number overall so the only problem I have with is basically option A, which talks about the fact that India is on course to meet only five of the targets, but it's less than that. It is only on course to meet three of the targets towards childhood stunting, uh, childhood overweight and exclusive breastfeeding. All the other targets, it is way off. That's the context. Okay, moving on to question number 95. On 24th of November 2021, the Union Cabinet has approved a bill to repeal the three farm laws, which were passed by the Parliament in September 2020. This is with an objective to bring reforms in the agricultural sector, especially in the marketing of the farm produce. So, but all of these three farm laws were repealed. Which article of the constitution gives the power to the parliament to make laws and also gives the power to repeal them through the Repealing and Amending Act of 2019? So the article that is referred to here is Article 245. That's the constitutional article which gives power for making laws and repealing them. Moving on to question 96. Which police station has topped the annual list of India's top 10 police stations for 2021 released by the Ministry of Home Affairs? So the answer in this case is the Sadar Bazar Police Station, New Delhi. Now, if I look at the overall list, uh, this is the one which has topped it. Gangapur PS in Ganjam, Odisha is a just second. And then Bhattu Kalan PS in Fatehabad, Haryana is the third best in that context. Okay, moving on to question number 97. Which space startup has recently successfully test fired the Dhawan 1? So the answer in this case is Skyroot Aerospace, which is basically a space technology startup based in Hyderabad and uh, India's first privately developed fully cryogenic rocket engine. This will basically power the upper stages of its upcoming uh, Vikram 2 orbital launch vehicle. That's the context on this front. Moving on to question number 98, who's been elected as the president of the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol? So the context in this case is that uh, Ahmed Nasser al Raisi, who's basically uh, the Inspector General of United Arab Emirates, he'll take over as the next president of Interpol for a four-year term at the 89th Interpol General Assembly meeting that was held in Istanbul, Turkey, and he basically replaces Kim jong Yan from South Korea. That's the context. Right, so moving on to the next question, number 99, we're talking about the correct option with respect to the Ballon d'Or awards. So Ballon d'Or for the males or men category went to Lionel Messi. Women's Ballon d'Or went to Alexia Patelas. That's also correct. The year 2021 marks the 65th edition of the Ballon d'Or ceremony. That's also correct. So all the options in this case are correct. Talking about Lionel Messi, he's basically uh, playing as a forward for Paris Saint-Germain at this point of time. And he's won this uh, for the seventh record time. right? And talking about uh, uh, Alexia Patelas, she's basically won it for the first time as the uh, representative from a women's front. 
Right, so moving on to question number 100, who has been appointed as the brand ambassador for the 50th year celebration of Arunachal Pradesh government? So the answer in this case is uh, Sanjay Dutt, who has been appointed as the brand ambassador. Now, who is going to be the brand advisor? So the award-winning filmmaker and branding expert Rahul Mitra has been appointed as the brand advisor for this Golden Jubilee celebration. So that brings us to the end of uh, this particular session, wherein we looked at 100 questions from the perspective of November 2021. Okay, so yet another rapid fire session this time for the month of November 2021 comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I enjoyed delivering this session for you guys. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till that time, keep working hard, keep putting in your efforts and try to remember things. Because see, unless you enjoy this process, it will be very difficult for you to remember. So don't take stress. Enjoy the process of preparing for the exam. And trust me, if you work hard and if you enjoy the process as well, you will definitely be able to ace the exam. You will be able to ace the exam. Enjoy career process ko, apni mehnat karte rahiye, fal zaroor milega. So this is Ravi signing off. Have a great day and a wonderful week ahead. See you guys.